is the capital of Peru, the second largest country in South America after Brazil and Argentina. The Plaza Mayor is its heart, the location where most of its historical events took place and where the cathedral was witness to many regal processions. In 1564, Francisco Pizarro laid the foundation stone for construction of his cathedral, which soon proved to be too small, and it was planned to extend it. A short time after its consecration in 1625, it was damaged by an earthquake. Consequently, its complete reconstruction was necessary. This time, it included richly carved wooden porches and highly decorated facades. Joie de vivre is written on the faces of the city's children here. Music and dance dominates their lives. It's difficult to believe that once the heads of rebels were displayed here, along with the cruel fires of the Spanish Inquisition. The Palacio de Gobierno on the northern side of the square is also known as Pizarro or Government Palace but is not open to the public. This neoclassic building was completed in 1938 and stands on the foundation of the former Pizarro Palace. In the palace gardens is the house in which Pizarro was killed. Each day in front of the entrance, the ceremony of the changing of the guard is held. The president's soldiers dressed in their blue-red uniforms and golden shining helmets. Lima, the city of kings, became the capital of the largest region in Spanish South America. Here resided the viceroys of the Spanish crown. During colonial times, this city was the finest, largest, most populated and most cultivated city on the continent. Luxurious Spanish-style buildings, as well as prosperity and the flamboyant lifestyle of its inhabitants, gave the city its name of the Pearl of the Pacific. Despite earthquakes and modernization, several traces of colonial and early Republican splendor have been well maintained. Some of the most beautiful colonial buildings in South America are to be found in the old town of Lima, with carved balconies of Moorish origin and removable wooden gratings. At the beginning of the 17th century, the original Lima Cuadrada, as the old town is known today, had a population of 20,000. including a few hundred members of the conquistador families, Indian servants, laborers, and African slaves. The 
development of the city increased rapidly. In 1680, a seven meter high city wall was constructed from oven fired clay bricks. It contained numerous bastions and seven gates. It was to keep out the much feared British pirates. New city areas developed, but several earthquakes destroyed the majority of the houses. Further vice kingdoms were established, and so ended Lima's most flourishing years. But some of the splendid colonial buildings have survived and emanate a little of the flair for religious design of a bygone time. On the 18th of January, 1535, the foundation of the new capital of an old country was celebrated by the Spanish Viceroy. The name Peru is connected with the fascinating advanced culture of the Incas and also with the savage battles of the gold-hungry Pizarro brothers. One of the city's most famous churches is the Iglesia de San Francisco. This huge religious complex that dates back to colonial times is part of the adjoining monastery, which previously was of even greater dimension. In 1546, Franciscan monks founded this monastery that has been designated by UNESCO as a World Heritage Building and is well maintained in every detail. The strong religious belief of the people has always been recognized by the Spanish Catholic Church the Dominicans and Franciscans spread Catholicism here. The lengthy arcades of the monastery complex are equipped with well cared for tiled walls and the Arabic Andalusian influence is plain to see. Here, there are also fragments of ancient wall paintings that feature biblical scenes. In a corner of the arcade, there is the entrance to a small chapel, one wall of which is decorated with a huge oil painting of Jesus on the cross. The neighboring yard with its typical monastery layout is encircled by two-story high arcades that open up to a garden that contains white Moorish arches. The magnificent library with its 25,000 leather-bound books and more than 6,000 parchments the date back to colonial times is well worth a visit. Several years in construction, the three-aisled basilica, of which the side aisles each contain a dome-shaped roof, was completed in 1672.
The Baroque splendor of the huge main altar, with its orange-yellow relief-like patterns, is an indication of the religious order's past prosperity. Although a severe earthquake in 1970 caused some damage, the basilica remained intact. In the church gallery, the choir stall, made from dark brown cedar wood, contains 132 pews that were used by the Franciscan monks. The clerical treasures of this period are stored in the Museum of Religious Art. A macabre site is located beneath the church, Lima's first cemetery. Catacombs that contain the bones of the dead. around 70,000 victims of an epidemic, some of which have been arranged geometrically. The front of the basilica, including both its towers, is probably the city's most beautiful colonial church facade, a masterpiece by the Portuguese architect Constantino Vasconcelos. The polite and reserved people of Peru have rhythm in their blood. Music and dance is their expression of friendship and joie de vivre, and also a manifestation of social values. Their splendid gold embroidered clothing is a reminder of their amazing rich heritage. Huaras is the 3,050 meter high capital of the Departamento Ancas in the White Mountain Range, the Cordillera Blanca. Here, few buildings remain from colonial times. Several natural catastrophes destroyed the majority of the old houses, and many people were killed. In 1824, Simon Bolivar built his headquarters here prior to his bloody struggle for Peru's independence. The cemetery with its walled tombs that house the dead and towering above everything, a large stone statue of Christ with outstretched protective arms. The journey continues through a fascinating mountain world, the summits of which seem to touch the clouds. In 1975, this region was designated as a nature reserve. This was largely due to the Peruvian mountaineer Cesar Morales Amao. And it's here that the strangest plants in the world grow, the Puya Remondi. In this remote area, llamas wait patiently at the roadside dressed in colorful scarves and hats, always ready for the next photo shoot opportunity. The breathtaking views of the snow-covered 7,000 meter high mountains make the remoteness of this region more bearable.
But after only a few minutes, the weather changes. Suddenly the sun disappears and it begins to rain, or perhaps it could even snow. The barren ground quickly absorbs the first raindrops and the plants are slowly covered by a fine covering of snow. The flora of this high mountain region is extremely hardy and used to the sudden onset of wintry weather. The Indios who live in the highlands have a hard life and for 4,000 years the Lama has been their indispensable beast of burden. Finally, we have reached the village of Chavin de Huanta on the high plateau beyond the mountain pass. Suddenly, the weather has changed once more. The village is situated at an altitude of 3,200 meters and in the first century BC was the most important center of pilgrimage in Peru. The first hunters and gatherers settled here, farmed and bred cattle. After a four-hour drive, the ruins of Chavin de Huanta, the remains of one of the oldest cultures in Peru, This region contains more than 3,000 years of history. However, these huge blocks of stone were only discovered in the 16th century. Due to the lack of a writing system in this period, little is known of Chavin culture. Engraved stone snakes, birds, and predatory wild cats have been among the most commonly found images of this mysterious ancient and highly developed culture. In addition to a well laid out canal system that led rainwater into a river, the Rio Mosna, the ground itself contains many hidden treasures. In the oldest part of this area, there are entrances to a subterranean world. Here, an assortment of passages and rooms extend down almost seven floors. In the darkness of the corridors, there are a total of 35 granite heads that are known as the Cabezas Clavus. Scientists believe that during the religious ceremonies that took place here during the Chavin period, some of the blood that was used in the rituals found its way to this underground location. The human faces of the stone heads that were once nailed to the walls are a bewildering and disturbing sight. The thousand year old secrets of the mysterious rituals that took place in these underground rooms will probably never be revealed. The 
dim light that illuminates the narrow corridors intensifies the atmosphere of mystique of this early architectural masterpiece. Leaving this place of cult worship, everyone breathes a big sigh of relief when stepping out into the daylight. The Isla Balestas is a peninsula that's located on the southwestern coast of Peru. It's a nature reserve and a highly successful tourist attraction. A boat trip is a good way to see the coastline, passing by huge sand dunes that reach to the shore. Further on, we pass the rocky coast that is called Guano Island, named after the birds that nest on those rocks and produce guano. Throughout the year, this peninsula is inhabited by seabirds, turtles, and various kinds of sea lion that frequently bask in the sun. In order to protect and ensure the survival of these wonderful creatures, it's prohibited to enter this nature reserve. The tiny excursion boats bob up and down due to the heavy surf that is created by the meeting of two different ocean currents in front of the peninsula. The valley oasis of Nazca, which played an important role during the early history of Peru, is a desolate area in the south of the country. A small airport is the starting point of a journey to one of the world's greatest mysteries, the enigma of Nazca culture. From a tiny single-engine aircraft, it will be possible to observe huge patterns on the ground that are only clearly visible from the air. For some minutes, we fly above green mountains we take a look to see if we can spot the patterns on the ground. But then we arrive, the first incredibly large image of a monkey. Images of humans, animals and geometric forms are scattered over an area of 1,000 square kilometers and are believed to be the pages of some sort of fantastic historical and astronomical book. Everything points towards the fact that these images were created by the Nazca between 500 BC and 500 AD. These vast illustrations were created by the knee-deep erosion of the red-brown surface scree, 
until yellow sand appeared. Twenty-eight kilometers from Nazca is the cemetery of Chauchilia, a place of the macabre. One thousand year old bones, skulls and entire mummies covered in tattered clothes sit and lie within numerous compartments next to fragments of pottery. The sleep of the dead was disturbed by unscrupulous grave robbers and according to early Nazca belief, the reincarnation of the deceased. Unfortunately, little remains of this bizarre culture. Its history has been destroyed by the sands of the desert. The journey on the locomotive, El Tren Inca, through some of the most rugged mountain scenery in the world, promises to provide a fascinating insight into the long-forgotten traditional culture of the Incas. From the town of Puno, where this trip begins, we will travel by train to the famous Lake Titicaca, and then to Cusco, capital of the Inca Kingdom. The extensive Altiplano the name of a high treeless plateau unexpectedly provides us with a splendid mountain panorama. At a slow pace, the old diesel locomotive drags itself along the Puna plateau. Until suddenly, green water comes into view, one of the highest navigable lakes in the world. Lake Titicaca. Legend has it that this lake was the birthplace of Inca culture. The 8,300 square kilometer Titicaca Lake is located at an altitude of 4,000 meters in the Andes Mountains, on the border that divides Peru and Bolivia. Up to 281 meters deep, and with a temperature of 8 degrees centigrade, it contains a multitude of freshwater fish. The reflection of the dark mountains in the water suggests the presence of an abundance of minerals. Over thousands of years, an extraordinary and unique animal and plant kingdom has developed here. vast lake at this altitude is quite unique. For many years it was considered to be the highest navigable water in the world, but this title has since been granted to another lake in Peru. In the western area of the lake, there's a fascinating group of islands that have been created by man the floating islands of the Uru Indians. Canoes made from rushes indicate that they are close by. The artificial islands vary in size and support modest wooden huts. The islands and the canoes are made from closely packed bundles of totora reed. When dry, the Totora reed found in the shallow areas of Lake Titicaca is extremely fragile. In water, however, it has the elasticity and strength of hemp rope. The 
Indios settled on their floating islands many centuries ago. Maize and corn are still ground with a heavy millstone. On the menu there is a variety of fish, plants and birds. The bow of the balsa boats, made from rushes, are richly decorated. However, the rushes rot after about 12 months and new boats are built to replace them. Around 250 Indians still live on the 80 or more floating islands, of which some are even used to grow grain. For the Incas, the legendary lake is said to be water without foundation that is connected to the world's largest oceans, a lake on which the earth gently drifts. Wool production is an important source of revenue for Indios women. The pleasant climate of this region is partly due to the mineral content of the water that helps to keep the temperature down. After leaving the Wobbly Islands, the juddering train travels across the endless fields of the untouched high mountain area. A newly boarded group of musicians transforms the atmosphere of the Inca train. Next, an enjoyable stop in Juliaca to buy provisions and handicrafts or just an ideal opportunity to stretch the legs. The train travels slowly through small villages and sometimes the rails even pass through a market. From this railway junction it's only 338 kilometers to Cuzco. Because the railway track is mainly without bends, there is a constant shunting backwards and forwards. The time when the train is transferring from one rail to another is a welcome break. And with little ceremony, passengers are invited to change from one train to another. Cusco, the navel of the world capital of the Inca realm. This city is located at an altitude of 3,400 meters above sea level and has more than 200,000 inhabitants. Friendly people wearing national dress welcome the new arrivals. The square of the weapons, Cusco's main square, was built on the foundations of ancient Inca palaces. Unique churches and wells that date back to colonial times give Cusco a typical Spanish ambience. The end of a remarkable epoch is featured on this wall painting, The Cruel Conquest of the Spanish. Cusco was a prosperous Inca city and shone with gold. In 1533, the city was conquered by the Spaniard Pizarro with a small contingent of soldiers. The Incas fought back without success. Thus, Cusco remained in the hands of the Spanish. The meticulously worked stones, none of them joined by mortar, that form the stable and uniform walls are extremely striking. As Cusco was the capital of the Incas, 
All the roads of the Quattro Suyos, or regions, ended here. Its narrow alleys have a protective quality about them. On the ruins of the sanctuaries of the Incas, churches were built, and with little resistance, the people converted to the Catholic faith. Ancient wooden balconies and tile roofs dominate the city. A contrasting blend of both Spanish and Inca culture. And traditional patterns and colors are also present in the arts and crafts. Even today, alpaca wool is very popular in the manufacture of quality clothes and fine carpets. The ruins of buildings that date back to pre-Columbus times are reminiscent of a fortress and several temples. It was not long before Cusco became the archaeological capital of Latin America. In the evening, there is a leisurely atmosphere in the Plaza de Armas. Numerous benches provide a comfortable place for the latest gossip, and surrounding restaurants offer a tempting menu. The realm of the four regions that survived rebellions and earthquakes was conquered and transformed. But its fascination and charm still exist today. Close to Cusco is the Holy Valley of the Incas, a fertile high valley between Pizac and Olanta y Tambo. The terraces were created by the Incas and are still used today. A perfect climate and a good supply of water ensure an abundant harvest. Three hundred meters above the village there are the well-maintained and restored ruins of a fascinating fortress that was discovered in 1934. Because the night temperatures are higher here than in Cusco, the Incas chose this area as their center of agriculture. The tropical vegetation makes it easy to forget the high altitude of this valley. The flowering cacti in the isolation of this mountain kingdom are an unforgettable sight. It's not surprising that the Incas chose this fertile valley and for centuries based their culture here. Ancient Pizac was a fortified city that extended across an area that was five times larger than Machu Picchu, the largest Peruvian settlement that dates back to pre-Columbus times. Unfortunately, little is known of this Inca metropolis. Excavation here is still far from complete. The ruins of Pizac are situated on a small rock. 
surrounded by agricultural terraces for which the watering system is quite remarkable. The walls of the buildings and temples were constructed of polished and perfectly fitting stones that were crafted with great skill. It's unknown why this huge complex and all the remnants of this highly developed culture have vanished without trace. In the extreme southeast of Peru, on the western edge of the Amazon basin, is the world's largest national park, made up of rainforest. At 18,000 square kilometers, it's half as large as Switzerland and has become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Even today, various Indian tribes inhabit the most remote and inaccessible areas of the jungle. Boat is the only way to reach most settlements or to experience all the magic of the natural landscape. Disturbed by unexpected sound, crocodiles half-heartedly interrupt their siesta and make for shelter in the safety of the water. Hidden within the dense vegetation, there's a flourishing animal and plant kingdom, usually only spotted by those familiar with the jungle. However, 800 species of birds, 13 varieties of monkeys, and innumerable other animals live here. Waterfalls, springs and creeks at each blink of the eye. Around one-fifth of all the plant species in South America can be found here. River turtles also live in the jungle as well as the largest rodents in the world, the capybaras. This rare animal can normally only be seen in a zoo. Animals that have already disappeared from some regions still live in the protection of these unique surroundings. Fortunately, many zoological associations and environmental agencies have made it their task to protect this unique area. Also, tourism, with all its attendant disregard for the jungle's wildlife, is a constant problem, and one that is closely monitored. More than 1,200 species live here, and each day nature creates new miracles. Newly hatched butterflies leave their cocoons to experience the world outside. Within the caves and fissures of the clay slopes of the riverbanks, there's a large number of parrots.
darkness falls silently across one of the last paradises on Earth. We continue on the Inca train to the final destination of our journey. The train belches out more and more steam. Meter by meter, the old diesel engine struggles ever upwards. The journey leads into the Cordillera, a barren mountain range that extends from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego. Peru's mountain peaks are up to 6,000 meters high. A bodego doubles as a train station. Here, passengers stop for a short break. Precariously, the railway track continues higher and deeper into the Cordillera. The train follows the sacred river of the Incas, the Rio Vilcanota, now known as Urubamba. The train continues its ascent. It's evening when we finally arrive at the highest point on the line. The lost city is mystical and misty. Machu Picchu, an ancient mountain peak. The strange ruins are located high up in the Andes on an almost inaccessible mountain ridge. This place was dedicated to the Sun Cult. For reasons that are unknown, its people eventually moved elsewhere. The lost city of the Incas is the best known and most famous location. It's estimated that it was built by the Incas in the middle of the 15th century. Much of Machu Picchu has survived because when the Spanish invaders arrived in South America, it had already been abandoned and lay hidden in the remoteness of the mountains. In 1911, the American archeologist Hiram Bingham discovered this intriguing city. I began to understand that these walls and the semicircular temple are among the most beautiful stone buildings that the world has ever seen. And I was overwhelmed. The words of a man who not surprisingly was awestruck by his amazing discovery. The warm light of the first sunbeams announces a new dawn and like magic, seems to transform the ruins of this mystical city into something that has once more come alive. An eagle's nest is situated in the rock walls of the ancient buildings. To survive the harsh climate, the Inca farmers overcame nature's hostility by building artistically terraced slopes on which to grow their food. In the days of the Incas, the hardy llama was used as a pet and farm animal. Today, these llamas still manage to find tough blades of grass in the scant earth. It's not been possible to discover the secret of the Inca's building techniques. The huge stone blocks fit together seamlessly. Due to the huge quantity of building materials used and amazing construction techniques, it's not surprising that this city has been associated with extraterrestrial influences. The terraced hills of the city's plateaus are linked via a number of stone steps. It's estimated that during the 15th century, right up to the time when the Inca nation was at its zenith, 
around a thousand people lived here. It's believed that the Inca king, Manco Capac, established the city in this impenetrable mountain area in 1536 as a strategic location from which to attack the Spanish. Ruins are all that remain of the great realm of the Incas. However, these extraordinary people still manage to capture the imagination. Peru is a country full of mystery and ancient history. A land of mountains, desert and jungle. A precious gem on the edge of the world.